Sometimes you do everything right in this trade and it still just somehow goes wrong. So this one might look familiar. About, yeah. about a month ago, some, sometime in that time frame we were out here, we did a leak repair on this unit. The leak repair we did was in here. Oh, you, you can see uh, here, there's some, it's like shiny. It's because our braze, it, it exploded evidently. System blew its whole charge after we did our leak repair. Not good. In the video, I'll probably try and link a little section of it because I even said, hey, this might fail due to what we're doing. And if it does, we'll replace this whole section of pipe. On a leak like this, um, in an ideal world, what we'll do is we will actually, if this was our pipe, we would cut it, cut the whole section out, braze it a new piece of pipe, and that would give us our best chance of not leaking in the future. Honestly, if this leak occurs again, we'll probably just uh, fix it for free for the customer and cut the whole section of pipe out and redo it. Well, that's what happened. To replace me. all this is new. All the way over, inside, up, we repiped the whole thing. This is being done at no charge to the customer, is what it is. You know, most contractors don't want to do leak repairs because of the possibility of this kind of stuff happening. We will lose money on this job, 100%. Sometimes you do everything right in this trade and it still just somehow goes wrong. And that's, that's what happened here, and guess what? We lost money. You can't really be too upset if you lose a little bit of money on one job because you're going to make it back on the next one. We just keep trucking along and yeah, things will work out. If you like HVAC videos, then subscribe because we'll, we'll just keep putting them out. Alrighty guys, so this leak repair has turned into a bit of a nightmare job for us. This system, it's our third time out on it. I'm gonna I'll give an overview of kind of what all went wrong, what's our fault, what's not our fault, but some of it is definitely our fault. That's what happened. Seven years ago, there was a leak right here. They're on this bend, this factory bend. Another company did a leak repair. So that, that was in 2017, it's 2024. We came out and that leak repair had failed. It was leaking about so somewhere over here. Due to the location of it, we thought our best chance was to just try and go over top of it. So we sanded the whole pipe. We actually made a whole video on how to repair a refrigerant leak. And we did it on this system. We did a clean job. Everything went real smooth on the repair. A month later, it popped again. Our braze did not hold. And I didn't charge the customer anything extra. And what we did was we actually went and bought some half inch pipe. We connected it on the other side because we thought that that was the spots that we would be able to do the best brazes. It has a leak again. And it is our fault. This high pressure switch is leaking. I'll show you. I was not the one who did this leak repair. It was Alex and Johnny. And I actually had told them if they got too close to the high pressure switch to go ahead and cut it out. Now, that didn't happen. <laughs> it did leak. It didn't, I, I came, I was around for the pressure test. I was around for the vacuum. It held over 400 PSI. We pressure tested it to like four something to make sure because we didn't want to deal with this again. I mean, we got shit on there. 314 PSI. We don't have any leaks here. We could also uh, do this. Simulate some vibrations. <laughs> uh, if it pops, it pops. So you, I mean, the compression. No movement. <laughs> Blows that pressure switch right off. <laughs> I know. Boom. No movement. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. We are getting there. We're vacuuming out this whole condenser, the evap coil, and we're measuring on the far side. All right, we're getting cl close to calling it. All right, our vacuum is closed and we are under 500 microns. So it's pretty much an ideal scenario. We don't want to get too low because it can mess up the compressor oil. You can see our vacuum has no decay. All right, we did a very long decay test. It's not moving, guys. <laughs> not moving at all. We are hooked up to the system. In case anyone was wondering. <laughs> Better be no leaks in this thing. With our luck, there's gonna be a fourth time. <laughs> all right, so we are hooked up. Contactor is engaged. Get this thing up to eight pounds. <laughs> 
every moment, I mean, we're always trying to do the best work we can. Sometimes guys mess up, sometimes I mess up, sometimes my guys mess up, sometimes. I mean, everyone messes up sometimes. I can't really be too mad. I mean, this system has just been the bane of our existence. The first leak repair was done seven years ago. We went over top of that. I brazed it and it failed. I'll stand by our work. We came back out after it busted. We didn't just go back over top of it. Ran new piping. This is what it is. Like we just ate that cost. I was like, fuck it. We make money on most jobs we do. Even when we have a nightmare install, usually we're still profitable. So we lose money every once in a while. It just is what it is. You just stand by the work you do and then if shit hits the fan, shit hits the fan. I don't think anybody likes losing money. Feels like I'm just throwing it away on this system. So we came back and we fixed it. We, we ran that new piping. I don't remember which of them I told, but I, I told them before they did it, hey, cut out that high pressure switch. That didn't happen. It didn't leak immediately, but when you braze that close to another joint, you run the risk of weakening it. We did pressure test it real high and it vacuumed down and held and the whole nine yards. I wish that they wouldn't have done that, but not really that mad about it. Learning experience for everyone involved. I wouldn't call anything we've done up to this point really shoddy work. I think it just kind of shows that, hey, if you take little shortcuts here, little shortcuts there. The first shortcut we took was not just cutting out that whole section of pipe after the braze failed the first time. We obviously don't know what's what's going on underneath that braze, underneath that leak repair. We weren't the original one trying to fix it. That's not really a shortcut, but I mean, it kind of is. We paid the price for that, but we came back out, we fixed it better, took a second shortcut by not cutting out that high pressure switch and we paid the price for that. I will say, if you're brazing two things that close together, and this is for any technicians out there, if you're doing a leak repair and you're getting that close to another braze, what you're gonna wanna do is heat that joint up and just touch it up. I mean, I know a lot of guys won't wanna go through the trouble of doing stuff like that. Then you end up in a situation like we were in today. I mean, they didn't do that, obviously, because if they had, then we wouldn't be in the situation we were in. When we know that there's a better way to do it and then we don't do it, obviously that comes back on us. We fixed this whole job, we made it all right, everything's beautiful, everything's running, it's heating and cooling and everything's gonna be great. I don't think most guys would have cut that section of pipe out on that first go ahead, but if you would have, go ahead and tell me we did it wrong. Cause if, ever, if the consensus is that we went, we did it wrong the, the first time, please let me know, but I mean, we got good feedback on that video we posted, so I don't think that people are gonna feel that way. The second time when we didn't touch up that joint, tell, tell me what you guys think about that too. I, I think they thought I was being extra on it. That's why they didn't cut it out. You guys tell me, like, what, what's what's the right way to to do that? Should they have cut that out? Like I said, or should, were they good? Were they in the clear or not? Let's get some technicians dropping some comments telling me what you guys think because I, I'm curious what, yeah, like what other HVAC guys would have done in that scenario and if they think that that was just kind of a bad luck thing that it leaked again or if they would have cut it out like I told them to. In my mind, uh, cutting it out was the right way to do it, but oh well. Leak repair failed, failed two times. I've, I've never had that happen. This is the first time we've dealt with a refrigerant leak that we've, we've touched since I've been in business. We haven't had any new systems leak out yet knock on wood and we have done several leak repairs we haven't had any leaks on joints that we've touched except on this one 